Hello and welcome to Counting Text in Excel. My name is Jeff. I'm glad you're here. Hey, let's just jump right in. Now, a lot of times when we think about using Microsoft Excel, we think about using numbers, adding numbers, counting numbers, finding the min, max, or average of numbers, but oftentimes we are using text values. So in this video, we're going to talk about a variety of different ways to count cells with text values. All right, we're going to do all these different types of counts. Let's go ahead and start with the first one. The first one is that we want to count the number of cells that are equal to a specific value. In this case, the word apple. So we go equals count if. And we say we want to count the number of cells in where in this column that are equal to our search term. In this case, it is Apple. And then we close the function and hit enter. And this is returning a value of one. That means there is one cell in this range equal to Apple. But it's like, hmm, we have Apple, but we also have Apple pie. We have pineapple. We have red apple. So what's the deal? All right, this is counting the number of cells that are equal to Apple. This is different than saying, how many cells contain the word apple? This is saying how many cells are equal to the word apple. Now, in a minute, we're going to do those types of partial matches. But before we move on to that, I also want to talk about how do we reference a value in a cell rather than typing our search term directly in the cell. So that brings us to this equals count ifs. We want to count the number of cells in column A that are equal to whatever the user types in a different cell. Let's call it C1. Close the function and enter. So now when we do Apple, we get a value of one. If we go with Kiwi, we'd get one. And let's go back to Apple and enter. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. First of all, these searches that are done with the count if function are case insensitive. That just means that the case doesn't matter, like case is ignored. So for example, if I type in Apple with a capital A, it still returns one. Likewise, if I go with something like all caps, I still get the value of one. And if I go with all lowercase, I get a value of one, right? So this means it's a case insensitive, upper lowercase just doesn't matter. And we'll address case sensitive matches down below here. So the next one, though, is how do we count cells that begin with Apple, end with Apple, or just contain Apple? These are called partial matches. For that, we're going to want to use wildcards, specifically the asterisk wildcard character. <laughs> so let's check this out. Equals count if we want to count the number of cells in this range, comma, that begins with Apple. So the way that we do that is we say Apple. And then we use the asterisk wildcard to stand in for any number of characters. So it means it could be apple, and that's it. It could be apple and pie, and you get the idea. Any value that begins with the word apple. So we hit enter, and now we get two. And this is because we have apple and apple pie. Now these were not included because these end with the word apple. So to do that, we'd go equals count if. And we'd go count the number of cells in column A. And then to do ends with Apple, we do asterisk first, and then Apple, close function, and enter. And now we get three, because this is picking up Apple, pineapple, and red apple. Now, what if we want to count the number of cells that contain the word Apple anywhere within? Well, to do that, we go with equals count if, count the number of cells in column A, that begins with any number of characters, and then includes the word Apple, and then ends with any number of characters. Enter. And now we get four. We get Apple, Apple Pie, Pineapple, and Red Apple. Now, what if we want to do the same thing, do this type of partial match, but instead of typing the search term directly into the cell, we want to actually refer to the value in a cell. So to do that, it's equals count if, count the number of cells in column A, and it would be very nice if we could just do an asterisk, the cell reference, and an asterisk close function and enter. But we're going to get a problem with that. But here's the deal. In this context, the asterisk is the multiplication operator. So we need to somehow tell Excel that we don't want to multiply something by C1. Instead, we want to use this as a wild card. So to do that, we need to enclose this in quotes. And it would be really nice if we could just hit enter and for Excel to understand that. But if we tried, we'd get an error message. What we basically need to do is separate this into three distinct parts. We want to join the asterisk. And here we're going to use the concatenation operator, this ampersand, to the value that's in C1. And then join that to this 
closing wildcard asterisk. Enter, and now we got it. And by the way, if you don't like using this concatenation operator, the ampersand, we can also do this with a function. Um, depending on your preference, we could go with concat, if you have a newer version of Excel. Or if you don't have the concat function, you can use the concatenate function. They basically do the same thing. So we would say, go ahead and concat, which means combine. And again, we'd use the wildcard asterisk. And then we'd use a comma. And then whatever values in C1, comma, and then the asterisk. Close the concat function, close count if, and hit enter. And so that's another way to, to handle it. So which one should we use, concat or the concatenation operator? They both work the same. It's totally a personal preference. OK, cool. All right, excellent. Next one. The next one's going to use a different wildcard character, the question mark. So the asterisk wildcard stands in for any number of characters. The question mark stands in for exactly one character. So what we could do is we could say count if, count the number of cells in column A that contain exactly let's say one character, or two, three, or four characters. Close the function and enter. And we're getting a one, and that refers to Kiwi. Okay. So the question mark stands in for one single character. The asterisk stands in for any number of characters. So hmm, could we somehow use the asterisk to just count the cells that contain like text? Yeah, we could do that. So equals count if. We want to count cells in column A that are basically not empty, that have some characters. Enter, and we get nine. And that's one way to count the number of non-blank cells. Um, but we have another sort of cleaner option, and it's the count A function. So we could just say count A of column A. Close function and enter. And that's another way to count non-blank cells. Again, it's just personal preference. Now what about counting blank cells? Well, it would be equals count blank. Column A, close function, enter, and that's going to return the number of cells that are blank. Now, what about if we want case sensitive results? In other words, upper and lower cases matter. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to call in some other functions. Let's just kind of take it one step at a time. First of all, equals, if I use the function exact, this is going to return true when the two text string arguments are exactly equal to each other case sensitive. So for example, I could say, does the value in A3 exactly match apple? And it's going to say false. Or I could say, does it exactly match apple? And it's going to say true. Okay. And so what this returns is a true or false value if they exactly match case sensitive. If I were to fill this down, I would get a column of true false values. Now what we can do is convert those into ones and zeros and then add up those results. So one option would be to use the end function. And this is going to convert trues and falses into ones and zeros. Let's go ahead and fill that down. And now we could just sum up those results, right? So if we were to do a sum function and add up these results, we'd get the desired total. Another way to do that, if we didn't like to use the end function, is simply do a double hyphen. And this forces it into a number. So we could hit Enter, and we can double click to fill that down. And now we got it. So then we just need to sum those values up. So instead of breaking it down into all those different steps, we can actually do this in one single formula. And it uses the sum product function to do the sum. And what we'd say is either n or double dash, either way is fine. And then we'd say exact. And then we'd say find the number of values in column A that are exactly equal to apple. Close those functions, hit enter, and we get 0. And that's because it is case sensitive. If I use uppercase apple, then it's going to do the match. Um, I can also point that to a cell reference. So equals some product. And this time, let's use the n function to convert exact of those comma that are equal to the value in cell C. Close exact, close n, close some product, and enter. And now we've got it. Let's go ahead and change this to apple. and. Now we get the value of 1. And now what if we want to do a case sensitive partial match? Okay, To do that, we're going to do the same basic idea. This one starts with the find function. And the find is case sensitive. So it says, find the term um, apple, comma, in here. 
and let's go ahead and hit enter and let's go ahead and fill this down. So what this is basically saying is if it finds the term apple, it's going to return the position number where it starts. So this is saying that, yes, I found the term apple and it starts at the first character. Yes, I found apple starts at the first character. All these errors mean I did not find the term apple. What if I go with lowercase apple? Okay, let's go ahead and fill this one down. And now I see the results. I could not find this spelling of apple all the way down. Here I found it, it starts at the fifth position. Here I found it, it starts at the fifth character. And once again, we can convert these into true or false values. And we'll do that by using the isNumber function. And this is basically saying, is the result a number or not? Let's go ahead and fill that down. And here we get a bunch of falses, we get a couple of trues. And now we need to convert these back into zeros or ones. Again, we could do that with the n function. Or we can use the double dash or double hyphen instead. And let's fill that down. Either way is fine. And then we could sum those results up. And again, we can do all of that at once by using the sum product function. So here we'd go equals sum product. We're going to do the double dash or the n function. Either way is fine. We're going to test to see if the results of the find function is a number. And then we're going to try to find uh, the value apple in this range and close the find function, close is number, close some product and enter. And here we get two. We can also use that by pointing at a cell reference equals some product. We're going to use the n function this time is number find. And let's go ahead and find the value that's in here, comma in here. Close the find function, close is number, close n, close some product, and enter, and we got it. Okay. By the way, if you use Excel and you'd like to save time, be sure to check out the seven time hacks video. It's a collection of seven time saving techniques that every Excel user should know. And those are a few different ways to count text values inside of Excel. Well, hopefully, this helps. Thanks for joining me, and have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 